We have all been shocked and horrified by the destruction and loss of life in the Sendai earthquake. Not only a devastating 9.0 earthquake, but followed almost immediately by a monster tsunami, and now a nuclear emergency as the safety systems on three nuclear reactors fail. Now the true cause has been made clear. Solar activity and a rare supermoon. It is all explained by a radio talk show host and an astrophysicist turned meteorologist. Just listen to what they have to say. Give us your view uh, on ABC and others saying that uh, did supermoon cause 8.9 earthquake in Japan? What is a supermoon, sir? A, a supermoon is when the moon is closest to the Earth and there's also a so full on you. But basically, that, that type of that situation gives you the strongest. Um, tidal effect. Um, now, the idea that the supermoon helps trigger earthquakes is absolutely correct. We we agree with that, and we know there is a lunar signal in um, earthquake data. Uh, but we also know that to actually trigger an earthquake, it seems very helpful, you might say, if there is also, also uh, major activity on the sun just preceding the moment where there will be some lunar effects in terms of tides. There was a big X solar flare. Yes, yes, what you need to get a big earthquake is a combination of a lunar and solar effects. You need uh, a big events on the sun and then events, those events affect the solar wind and you need the solar wind uh, coronal mass ejections to be directed to Earth. And yesterday, Earth was hit by a coronal mass ejection. And at the same time, it helps if you've also got uh, extra lunar tidal effects on the Earth's crust. And that's what we've got right now, So, uh, or, or near that. So um, that, that uh, gives us what we, what we don't understand, the details of how it all works. But we do know that uh, when you get a coronal mass ejection hitting Earth, that there is a lot of geomagnetic activity. That is, the magnetic field of the Earth goes a bit wild. Now, that is connected to the Earth deep down. So, so uh, you know, changes in that does involve forces, and uh, uh, that could encourage or tip the balance, which allows a tectonic plate to move that little bit that it uh, is trying to go. Does your gut tell you, Doctor, that, that uh, this, this was probably triggered... Uh or pushed over the edge by the supermoon and the coronal mass ejection? Yes, yes, we would say that. We say this thing was caused by events on the sun or rather solar, a solar-lunar combination. Now let's see why what we just heard is complete scientific drivel. Their claim is that the additional tidal forces from a so-called supermoon combined with extreme solar activity triggered this event. First, let's start, as they did, with understanding what a supermoon is. The moon's orbit is an ellipse, which means its distance from the Earth changes during its 27-day orbit. Thus, the tidal forces it exerts on the Earth is 25% higher when it is at its closest approach to the Earth, perigee, than it is at its furthest point, apogee. And this happens regularly each lunar orbit. Now let's bring the Sun into the picture. Twice per lunar month, the Sun, Moon and Earth line up such that the Sun's tidal pull is added to that of the Moon. So we get much bigger tides. They're called spring tides. The Sun's influence on the tides is less than half of that of the Moon's, even though it is much more massive it is much, much further away. When the Moon is in its half phase, the Sun and the Moon are pulling in orthogonal directions, so we get much more even gravitational pull on the Earth and the tidal forces are at a minimum. This is called neap tides. We experience a supermoon when the Moon is at its closest to the Earth at the same time as it lines up with the Sun. This can either happen at full Moon or new Moon, and it happens about every 18.6 years. So, where was the Moon at the time of the Japanese earthquake? Here is the timeline. The new moon occurred on the 4th of March, when it was at its furthest point away from the Earth. The supermoon was not due to happen until the 19th of March. The earthquake occurred on the 11th of March, so that puts the moon almost precisely between the two extremes, at its half-moon phase. So we were getting neap tides at the time of the earthquake, i.e. tidal forces were at their minimum. What about solar activity? Corbin said that we were hit by an X-flare and a CME before the earthquake. That is true, but not the whole story. I checked the NOAA daily space weather reports, going back four days before the earthquake. Indeed, there was an x flare on the 9th of March. In fact, I did a video about it. See the description box below. A coronal mass ejection passed the Earth on the 10th of March, but not from the x flare as Corbin implied, but from an M-flare on the 7th of March. 
It was a fast AME travelling at about 2,200 km per second, which means that it was somewhere out in the asteroid belt at the time of the earthquake. In the meantime, NOAA classified geomagnetic conditions as quiet to unsettled throughout this period. Corbin makes another elementary scientific mistake in claiming that the disturbed magnetosphere could have triggered the earthquake. Disturbances in the Earth's magnetic field during a geomagnetic storm act mostly on the polar magnetic fields, not those at lower latitudes. So unless there were auroras seen at Japan's latitudes at this time, there can have been no effect. There were no such aurora observed. So the solar activity aspect of this is nonsense as well. The earthquake was caused by a build-up of tension in a subduction zone in the Pacific Plate, which does not need the sun or moon to make it happen. I lived in Japan for extended periods from 1991 to 1995. I came to love the Japanese people and their sophisticated culture. I still have many friends there who have not heard from since the disaster struck. I pray they are alright. Yet, here we have these two worms using this disaster to sell more advertising in their crummy radio show and justify their flaky scientific theories in order for both of them to make more money off other people's deaths and suffering. Sometimes capitalism goes too far and this is one such time. Think about their crass behaviour every time you see a video of the devastation in Japan and hear real news reports on the TV and radio. Please give whatever you can to help alleviate the suffering of the Japanese people. Keep safe. Bye for now.